no wonder the world looks at us. And when we say, you know, I'll, I'll send you my thoughts and prayers, you know, it's a punchline to them. I don't want your thoughts and prayers. Mm -hmm. I, I'm having a problem with my children. I, I'm having lack in my finances. I'm unemployed. I got laid off. My marriage is destroyed. And I want to live the life that says, hey, I came from nothing. Look at this. What he's done for one, he can do for another. Let me show you. Welcome to Stories of Hope in Hard Times, the show that explores how people endure and even thrive in difficult times, all with God's help. I'm your host, Tamara K. Anderson. Join me on a journey to find inspiring stories of hope and wisdom learned in life's hardest moments. My guest today is a certified Christian counselor and business coach who has helped countless people all over the country transform their personal and professional lives for over 30 years. And it, as an accredited coach and trainer, he has earned numerous accreditations and accolades in the area of sales, leadership, and consulting. Based in Texas, Daniel spends his downtime watching movies, reading, and helping others. I am pleased to present Daniel Tezano. Daniel, are you ready to share your story of hope? Oh my God, I thought you were talking about another guy there. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear that guy. Who's that guy? I, I, it's certainly not me, is it? <laughs> yes, I, um, thank you so much, Tamara. This is such an honor. This is so cool. Oh, I agree. It is fun to get on and talk to other people who are so excited to share their story. And sometimes it's hard to go back and relive some of those hard times, but it's it it's meaningful to others who are in those hard moments right now. Yes. But I thought we'd break the ice a little bit with the idea that you have an outgoing personality, but you're actually quite a private person. Tell me how that works. <laughs> You know, it's, it's such an oxymoron. And when, I, when you tell people that, they just don't believe it, right? <laughs> um, but in my heart of hearts, I would much rather be to myself with my family. And I, I love pushing others to their highest heights and helping them in every way that I can. But to, to put me in the front, or put me at the top, I, I'm just never comfortable with it. So... I find a lot of people who are in leadership are just that way. So I'm I'm not completely an anomaly, but yeah, that that's that's the truth. I would much rather be to myself. <laughs> Amen. And it's interesting. I think sometimes God pushes us into the limelight and we're like, no, oh, no, yeah. no. I'd really rather just stay in the background. <laughs> I, I think he does it just like a parent to a child. When a child is in an environment, a small child is in an environment, they're not familiar, what do they do? They grab their parent's hand, right? Mm -hmm. So God puts us in those environments and in those places and in those moments where we feel just enough discomfort to say, you know what, <laughs> I can't do this without you. And he's like, I know, that, that's why I have you here. So yeah, <laughs> it's, it, it's at some point you get comfortable being uncomfortable, if, if that makes sense. <laughs> Actually, it does. <laughs> yes, I resonate with that a lot because I remember the first when I first launched this podcast several years ago, I was really uncomfortable podcasting and I, I still feel like I'm a little kid holding on to God's hand. Like, I love that that image that you described there, but but I'm gaining more confidence the longer I do it. Does that make sense? <laughs> it is a journey. It is a process. And that's why he gives us a lifespan, because we never arrive. And when we finally arrive, it's like, hey, good for you. Applaud. Come on up here. That's <laughs> yeah. right. It's time to go. Come on up here. <laughs> yeah, you learned what you need to learn. It's yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So let's go back in your life and, and kind of paint the picture for me of you growing up and what your experience was as far as life and challenges and everything like that. Oh, man, I, uh, I talk a lot about it. And I'm a middle child of five. Uh, and if, for all the people who are middle child, they know the dilemma 
uh, you're too old for this or you're not old enough for that. So it's, <laughs> you know, you're constantly in that flux. Life was good. For the most part, both parents uh, were there uh, until later they divorced. And that's really when things took a turn for us. You know, I was very intrigued by my dad. You know, I, I, as a kid, I was more of an observer. I'm still more of an observer. And just watching him and just listening to things he talks about. He was an Army veteran. Uh, he didn't get the hero's welcome. Uh, but he never taught us to you know, be resentful or, you know, have an ax to grind or anything like that, you know, but he was very clear about a man. If a man did it, then another man can do it. If a man mm -hmm. built it, then you can build it. If a man built it, then you can tear it down and build it again. So he never looked at anyone as someone above him or beneath him. It was always, we're all equal, no matter what you're doing, no matter who you are, race, culture, age, it doesn't matter. So mm -hmm. that really resonated with me on the inside. And it, it gave me the personality to just see all people over time as God sees people. I don't, I don't see someone low or someone high. Um, as far as when the divorce took place, that's when I began to see things change. My, my mom was not well educated. You know, she grew up in the cotton fields and she was pulled in and out of school. And she only had about a sixth grade level ed education. So she, she couldn't read that well. So all of a sudden at the age of 12, uh, I had an older brother, older sister, younger sister and younger sister. Uh, I kind of became her go-to person, uh, mainly because I did well in school. She said, well, this guy he does well in school. He ought to be able to <laughs> do this stuff. So I had to learn a lot about bills and mortgages and standing in line, filling out, you know, welfare applications and things like that. And it's like, what's going on? We never had to do all this stuff. And I guess for my dad, he kind of looked at it as some release, you know, hey, I get to do what I want to do now. And so it, it was really a struggle. And that's what really sparked my, oh my God, I am getting older. Someday I would like to have my own family. How is all this stuff going to work? Mm. And that's really what made me look at the world in a different way. You know, how are all these people doing this stuff? Because we were never taught finances and you know, responsibility. So I had to learn it through that lens of uh, survival. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the, the foundation of all this stuff. That, that's where it's. The, so yeah, I talk about it a lot in my book. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, Tell us the name of your book. The name of the book is The Way of the Prophet. And prophet is spelled P-R-O-F-I-T. It is very much intentional uh, that we spelled it that way, because it is about building material wealth through your spiritual self. And mm -hmm. so I think people have a very twisted or sometimes uh, wrong view of wealth, especially when it comes to God. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to expand on that in a way that I think uh, gives a very clear argument that, wow, God does want us wealthy. He designed us for such I wrote it in a way where my kids can understand. So I hope I don't come off as a doofus. It's, it's, really, <laughs> wrote, it's really written simple. God said, make it simple. I said, okay, okay uh, I can do that. Done. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, how did you get from a 12 year old kid trying to figure, a, figure out how to take care and help his family to this pivotal understanding as an adult to where you're now teaching the concepts of God's abundance and his this law of abundance that he has for all his children. What did that journey look like for you? Well, you know, I uh, my son-in-law asked me that question one time and I told him, I said, by, by making a lot of mistakes. So <laughs> that's, <laughs> I don't know if we have time for all the mistakes. Matter of fact, let me get my wife on here. She can tell you about all the mistakes <laughs> better uh... than I can. You know, to answer that question, uh, curiosity. It was survival, curiosity, and just sheer determination to not wind up a certain way. And that determination 
actually caused me to be right in it, to be honest. And I think that's God's way of allowing you to see how far you can go with your own, your own will, your own level of education or what have you, and your own determination. And um, when you've come to the end of your ability, he steps in and say, okay, are you still trying now? Or you want me to, <laughs> <laughs> can I step in now? Is it okay? You know, so that's really the, the general uh, aspect of it. But I talk about when I met my wife, I was not looking, <laughs> neither was she. And when I met her, it, it, it was just, oh my God, this is my wife. And it scared me so much. And I had so much, I, 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 just, I just was not a confident young person. And I had so many insecurities inside of me. And she was the first person, I got to be very careful when I talk about this, because I get a little emotional about it. But she was the first person that pointed out to me, you, you, are, you have so much inside of you. You are so talented. You don't talk like everybody else. You talk like you've been raised by your grandparents. You know, that's what she told me. She said, you talk like an old person. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I don't curse. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I don't smoke. And I'm not saying like, you know, I have this wonderful, perfect life. I say all that to say I was just never curious about those things because I was so enamored with life itself. <laughs> mm. And I can learn through the experiences of others. My older brother did a lot of things. I'm not duly noted, not going to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was, like I said, an observer. And that's how I conducted my life. So marrying her was the pivotal point where I figured I got to get this thing together. Mm. because I can't let her down. That was really my motivation. And mm -hmm. uh, so here we are 36 years later wow. <laughs> on a podcast talking about <laughs> stories of hope and hard times. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> So what did those early years of marriage, were they a struggle to provide financially? What did that look like for you and your wife? We were two young people working, uh, modest jobs. I'll be honest, I was making 1200 bucks a month as a teller. I was very proud of that at a bank. We had enough to do some of the things we liked and other things, you know, just had to wait for. So it was very modest, but you know, I was a dreamer, still a dreamer. Um, and I just, I just wanted this big life. And I figured I haven't seen anyone that I know that has accomplished much. You know, I, I certainly would love to give my wife anything to this day. I would give my wife anything. I don't care what it is. She can't mm -hmm. ask for enough. I can't always give it, but <laughs> So yeah, that was my motivation. And but uh, here's the here's the thing. And I talk about this in the book. I was really fearful. I was fearful of not knowing the future. I was fearful of death. And I was fearful of just, oh, my God, I'm going to be a generational person in poverty with another family. And uh, that I was just driven by fear. I really was. No one knew that on the outside. Mm -hmm. But on the inside, that was always stirring. It was always going. So, um, so yeah, a lot of determination. And then in chapter three and four, that's where I talk about where I got filled with God's spirit. I mean, filled in a very dramatic way. Tell me about it. I was walking around with despair and dread, if you will. Don't know all of where it came from. And life just seemed so hard. And when I thought I gave my life to Christ, there was no light or feeling. There was nothing. And so I didn't really know if I was accepted or not. And that odd feeling permeated every day of my life within me. It, it, it was just something constant. I never showed it on the outside, but inside, it's like, I don't think I'm accepted. And then that's when you begin to think about maybe something you did or something you said, or, you know, good, maybe mm -hmm. I, I, 
did too much, you know, but I walked around with that as crazy as it sounds. And, you know, God knows how to get to us. It mm -hmm. really made me hungry for him. You know, if someone's not hungry, you can bring them in a five star restaurant. It's a buffet style with all of your favorites. It's like, hey, man, I'm not hungry. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So he has a way of making you hungry. I wanted nothing else. I, I, I don't think this can be solidified in my life. Nothing else matters. Uh, I thought being married would help a lot of that. And it did. It made me feel, I, I love being married, but it didn't. And mm -hmm. so I just walked around with this void and that little void in all of us is how God draws us to him. But I didn't know any of that. And so one night, I remember it clearly. Um, it was in 1987. Uh, it was 3.34 a.m. I remember trying to go to sleep with this dread. And you're kind of in the middle of it. You know, kind of in between about to sleep and not necessarily sleep. Because I can still hear the, the ceiling fan above me. I hear the AC going on and off. And I'm kind of feeling like I'm I'm drifting at least i think i am and then all of a sudden I, I see this light come out on the side of the room so that obviously perked me up so in my mind i'm awake and i'm like what is that and it just illuminates and illuminates to the point that it literally looked like daytime in the room and this is two three o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and i got up out of bed and I stood there and all I can remember is trembling, just utter trembling, not in fear, but just there was something there that was to be revered. And I was terrified and I'm looking at my feet, but I could not move. And I remember the spirit talking to me inside of my spirit. There was no mouth movement. We were literally communicating just like you and I, but inside my spirit. Mm -hmm. And it was very clear. And there was this uh, phrase prior to that night that kept saying, hey, if you take one step, I'll take two. I had no idea what that meant. And it came again. If you take one step, I'll take two. And I remember looking at my feet, lifting up my right foot and begin to plant it. As soon as my foot planted on the floor, this light came rushing to me and I was just enveloped in it. And I, I still don't know how to describe it, uh, but I could just see all these visions of galaxies and nebulas and the earth and people and it was it was it was crazy it was really crazy and i just had no idea what was happening and then i felt as if his hand was over my head and i, I kid you not tamara it was like he touched a hair and from that hair there was this rushing as i describe it in the book uh, water, but it wasn't wet. It was cold and hot at the same time. It was like a wind, but it was, it was, it was, I don't even, I still don't know how to describe it. And I'm not doing a good job at it, but it rushed through me and I just felt cleansed at peace, confirmed, validated, whatever you want to call it. And he just gently pushed me back into my bed mm. and I just sat up in my bed like what in the world <laughs> what was that <laughs> yeah and I didn't say anything and that's when the enemy comes you mm -hmm. had a dream go back to sleep oh, well maybe I did so I laid back down and I, wait a minute I know what I'm having a dream that wasn't a dream but I'm just laying there to my side. And then my wife turns over and she says, are you okay? I said, yeah, why? why? She says, God, you were just shaking and trembling and talking. And I 
were you having a bad dream? And I'm like, wait a minute, talking. What was I saying? She said, literally sound like you were speaking another language. It was literally mm. a language. Mm. I'm like, well, I'm not bilingual. So. <laughs> 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 and that's when it hit me. I'm like, oh my God, I think God touched me. And I wasn't sure. So I called a friend. And again, I, I, I talk about all this in the book, a church friend, and he pointed to a certain scripture where he said it was like fire shut up in my bones. And uh, I said, well, that that sounds like kind of how I'm feeling, right? Mm -hmm. And so I hung up with him and, and I'm talking to my wife and I reach over to the nightstand. There was a Bible there. I said, honey, for some reason, I feel like I understand this book through and through. If I was to read it, I, maybe I can't explain it right now. I just feel like I, I can un I understand everything in here. And so I put it back on the nightstand, but it fell. And it opened up to Acts chapter 2. And when I read what happened in that upper room, I'm like, that more accurately describes what happened yes. than what I just heard. And that's when life immediately change for me. I mean, literally change for me. Confidence came, fear left. I had no fear of death. I had no fear of provision. I had no fear of anything. And I was hungry for God's word. Mm -hmm. And I was in church all the time, religious programs, no matter what. I mean, I ate everything I could eat every day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow, what an incredible transformation to Feels go weird talking about it. Yeah. To go from just that hunger, feeling you're not adequate, that there's a void inside of you, to all of a sudden having this amazing experience with God and having him touch you and open your mind to him and his love and his light and his spirit. And that is just incredible. Wow. It's something to have experienced it. Uh, I do realize that, you know, everyone doesn't go through mm -hmm. that, but that's mm -hmm. why he's our personal savior. Mm -hmm. He's going to get to you the way he needs to get to you. And mm -hmm. what worked for me may not work for someone else, but he knows how to talk and get to his children. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So tell me, tell me how things went from there. What did your life look like after this pivotal moment? Well, financially, nothing changed. Actually, I was unemployed uh, when that happened. And um, that next morning, phone rang, say, hey, you know, we'd like to bring you on again. I'm still a teller. And um, I'm working as a teller and I'm just looking around and the president of the bank would walk through the lobby and wave at us as he walked by. And for some reason, I asked a coworker, I said, what does that guy make? So what do you mean? I said, how much do you think he makes a year? What do you think his salary is? And he was like, oh, God, <laughs> that guy makes maybe sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year. I said, 60, 70,000? He said, yeah. And I was like, my God. So you mean to tell me even if I become president, I can't even make six figures? Are you kidding? And he looked at me perplexed. like, And I immediately I said, I got to get out of here. That's exactly mm. what I said to myself at that very moment. I didn't know where I was going. And that's when God led me in the sales. And I did not want to do it. <laughs> 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 Isn't that so true, though, that we it's like God puts us in a path and we're like, ah, uh, no, not not this one, Lord. <laughs> when we pray for abundance, God is so quick to answer. It would make your head spin. And we see God as moving very slow because we're looking for the manifestation of things. God answers immediately. If you ask for a forest, what do you think he's going to give you? He's going to give you an acorn, right? <laughs> yes, yes. And so we're looking at the acorn like, but I wanted a forest. He said, I just gave it to you. Mm -hmm. Now we know that inside that acorn are other acorns and other trees. And if we plant and we do the right things, we can absolutely have that forest over time. 
spiritually, the principles are like that, but they work much faster if we're willing to just take him at his word and do what the Holy Spirit guides us into doing. And so this is where I see so many people miss it and get off track. Mm. Some people have prayed for abundance and immediately got fired. Mm. And they're like, oh, my God, this is not working. The devil's attacking me. Mm. No, he's moving you from your limited environment <laughs> to take you to an environment where you can expand and grow into mm. the abundance that you're so seeking. So it's all about trusting him in everything. And as I said, when you and I talked a little so often when he's driving us to a place we're not familiar with, <laughs> or he's going at a speed we're not comfortable with, we want to take the wheel, right? <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> it's because that's how we, that's what we've been raised from in the world. We bring mm. the world's attitude and experiences into this kingdom that we're now in, mm. right? And we, it's, I've often uh, compared it to imagine if you were an orphan, right? And all of a sudden, a very rich, prosperous, wealthy family, let's say they're royal, takes you on as their own. I can imagine probably at the dinner table, uh, you know, you're looking at all this food and because maybe where you came from, things are spare, you know, sparse. You're, you're grabbing biscuits, putting them in your pocket. You're, you, you know, oh, you know, I don't know if I'm going to have this tomorrow. And all of a sudden they're like, hey, 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 what are you doing? Put that back. We, this is all for you. You don't have to take it, right? And then all of a sudden we go into this room and, and we're looking at how nice it is. And, you know, yet we're so used to sleeping on the floor, we don't get in the bed. You know, it's that kind of mentality that we bring into the kingdom of God and all of a sudden, we frame this image of what we think God is like based on our experiences or, our, 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 you know, the way we were raised. And we think God is the same. He's not. Mm. So this is why so many of us have not yet experienced the abundance that he has for all of us. Mm. I, I don't know if people know this, but heaven does not have a recession. <laughs> I there, love that. I mean, there's no recession. There's no depression. There's no lack. There's no sickness. There's no disease. People don't like to hear these things. But when the disciples asked Jesus, how to teach us how to pray, one of the things he said, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. That was a callback to the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve were created, they were to expand the garden throughout the entire earth to make earth look like heaven. Mm. And that has not changed. Mm. The difference is God no longer talks to us outside of us. He's so intimate that he has now deposited himself inside of us. Unfortunately, the third person of the Trinity that we have inside of us, Paul said to, I think, the Corinthian church or the church of Ephesus, do you not know that God lives inside of you? Do you not know the Holy Spirit is inside of you? We have taken the God of all creation, of all love, and reduced him down to encouragement. How sad is that? <laughs> mm -hmm. We think God is only there for encouragement. No wonder the world looks at us. And when we say, you know, I'll, I'll send you my thoughts and prayers, you know, it's a punchline to them. I don't want your thoughts and prayers. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I'm having a, a problem with my children. I, I'm having lack in my finances. I'm unemployed. I got laid off. My marriage is destroyed. You know, these are the things that we are supposed to be examples of to say, hey, I have the answer for that. I want to live the life that says, I came from nothing. Look at this. It's to show, hey, what he's done for one, he can do for another. Let me show you. And there are principles and processes to doing it. And prayer and fasting is not one of them. <laughs> mm.
what principles did you learn that help you move on towards the path of abundance and living in God's abundance? That's a wonderful question. We're going to take a quick break, but when we get back, we'll have more lessons, tips, and things you can apply to your life. Stay tuned. Hey guys, have you started thinking about Mother's Day yet? Every Mother's Day, I am looking for a card or something, a gift to give my mom, my sisters, my friends, and it's hard for me to sometimes find those gifts. And so today, I'm so excited to tell you about this booklet, The Mother's Might. It's a perfect, simple, inexpensive gift you can give your friends, your family, your sisters, anyone that you want to share this story with. And it will be meaningful. It's not just a little piece of candy that they eat and forget. It's something they can read over and over again because so often we, as women, feel alone and overwhelmed and burdened and like there's so many things weighing upon our shoulders. And what I love about this story is that it points us to Jesus Christ in our times of trouble, that he understands us, he loves us, he knows what we're going through and he is more than willing to help us bear that burden. And I love that about this story, that it gives not only me hope, but it will convey that sense of hope for all of you. So get your copy of it today, tamarakanderson.com slash store. You can order one, two, 10, 20, however many you want. And we will get those to you so you can get them distributed by Mother's Day. All right, now on to our show. What principles did you learn that help you move on towards the path of abundance and living in God's abundance? That's a wonderful question. And the, the short answer to that is honoring him with our finances and giving, and it shall be given back to you. It's a law of reciprocity. I talk about the different spiritual laws in chapter, I think, 11. And there's a few laws that I only use for wealth, wealth building. And the law of reciprocity is one of them. If you look at the way everything is designed, everything is designed in circular motion from the smallest atom where we have um, the, the electrons and the protons circling around an atom, right? From the smallest atom to the, to the widest nebula in space, right? Everything is circular. The earth revolves around the sun. Uh, in our galaxy, all planets revolve around the sun. The earth spins on its axis. Uh, the seasons or, you know, summer, uh, winter, fall, spring, and then summer again. Um, everything is circular. So when God says, um, my word does not leave and return to me void, then the only way his word can be spoken is through us. Mm -hmm. And if we don't speak it, then it has no way of returning to him. Mm -hmm. So to say what I want to say is not going to return to him. <laughs> but if I say what he said, it has to return to him. And that's why it's so important that we speak God's word. Now, as far as a principle is concerned, the giving part, it says give and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom or your lap. Now, notice it said men will give back to you. It didn't say God would. And sometimes I think people are looking for money to rain down from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the scriptures preceding that, it talks about if you want justice, give justice. If you want mercy, give mercy. And it goes through all these reciprocating ideas of giving. Whatever you give, it comes back to you. Money is no different. Mm. Money is actually easy because we can call money whatever it is we're desiring to get with it. Now, money can't get love for you. Money can't bring a wayward child home. Money can't heal a disease. And money certainly can bring you back from death. We understand that money does not do everything. Mm -hmm. However, when it comes to things, money absolutely answers all things, as it says in Proverbs. So what we don't do is we don't tell or call our money what it is that we want. Mm -hmm. Here's what I mean. 
my wife and I has had the privilege of giving away cars, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember when my wife said, I would love a luxury car. Well, what is the first thing I would look at? Our checkbook right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, she handles the finances. So she's looking at me. <laughs> and I'm thinking, how in the world am I gonna, you know, and then all of a sudden, something presents itself. You know, my mother in law needs a car. So what do we do help her get a car? Now, while we're helping her get a car, we are now speaking over her car. Lord, as we sow this car to her, so one to us as well, the one that mm -hmm. we desire. And I was uh, so happy to be able to present my wife with her first luxury SUV vehicle uh, for her birthday one day. And I was nervous in doing it. So the real principle is when you give, speak over it. Mm -hmm. Words have power. We know they have power negatively, but we never think the divine power that they have positively. Mm. God spoke the world into existence. And when he created Adam, he had him do one thing. What was it? Name the animals. And he said, whatever you name them, it will be so. That's a very powerful principle. He said, what you call it, it will be so. Mm. Not what is this? And then name it. He said, whatever you call it, it will be so. Mm. And this still applies. So when you give, you're in need. Before you give, lay hands over it, speak over it, and speak Mark eleven twenty four. 24. He said, if you say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, it shall be done for you. So whatever you say, if you believe, it will be done. That's exactly mm -hmm. what he said. Tez no translation, by the way. That was, <laughs> my, that was my translation. So I learned to speak over my finances and release it in mm -hmm. faith. And when you know you're in faith, joy comes. You know it's on its way. There's no doubt in your heart. Notice I said in your heart, not in your mind, because your <laughs> mind will go back and forth. And we have seen abundance come our ways in several different ways. But you have to be sensitive to God's guidance. When he says, go and talk to this person or go and do this, you might be in the middle of the grocery store and he may tell you to say something to a stranger and everything in you is going to say it. I don't want to talk to that person. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the Holy Spirit guiding you. And through a conversation may lead to something else. And then that something else may open up a door in something you never would have thought otherwise. And there's your manifested thing that you spoke of. Mm -hmm. So the only thing to that is keep in mind, we have an enemy. <laughs> yes, and he we do. does not want you blessed. So always be aware of that. And unfortunately, in our culture, in our Western culture, we, we live in such a noisy environment. And there's so many influences, television and TV shows. And, and we find ourselves taking our prompts from the world. You know, this is how they got wealthy. So that's what I'm going to do. And all of a sudden, we're under the curse, sweat and toil for mm -hmm. things. Did not God say in Genesis chapter three, you will sweat and toil for your provision, sun up till sundown until, until you die. That's a curse. So if we're sweating and toiling for something, we are not walking in peace and abundance. Mm. We are walking under the earth's curse. Look at that royalty walking under a curse. It's crazy. So Get the that book. Really that way cool. they don't have to hear me go on. And on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love how you explain it. And I and, and it's just been so wonderful to hear your personal story of experiencing this, that it it's almost like you've chosen to live a higher law. You know, I don't I, I'm not going to go by the curse. I'm going to go by God's higher law. And exactly. this law is give and it shall. You know, it's that kind of cast thy bread upon the waters type principle. It's going to come back. And I love that principle. And it does require faith because you're, you're putting it out with faith 
but it's that faith that it will come back. And I loved how you said pray over it and speak over it and 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 put that positivity out into the world. Follow the promptings God gives you and it will return to you, you know? Our very salvation required faith. That is the open door to all of heaven's abundance. The same way you became born again is the same way we receive everything. In fact, the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please him. So what does that mean? That means you can't even talk to him because faith is required. So in that faith, and I get into the whole thing of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, which are two separate things. The kingdom of God is God's government. And I'm not going to get into that now, but we understand governments, right? Governments are there for their people and governments provide, right? And there's all types of governments. There are uh, commonwealth governments. There are uh, democratic republic governments. There are, uh, unfortunately, there are <laughs> regimes that believe in ruling with an iron fist. God has a government. That's where we get our government structure from. And in that government is provision. And we are citizens of that government. The difference with our government is that we are brothers and sisters. <laughs> we are mm -hmm. not strangers with one another. And that government also has a currency. Governments provide a means of exchange. We all know about it. Well, heaven has a currency also. It's called faith. Mm. And so that. use it for what you want. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, that is beautiful. So beautiful. I love the the concept of thinking about it as a government. I know I was talking to a friend just a few months ago about this this principle of abundance. And <clears throat> and I was I was talking to her about some of the mental limitations that I, I placed upon myself, kind of like you were talking about at the beginning, is is we 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 have this limited view sometimes and it's that's what's holding us back it's not god it definitely is and i remember talking to her about it and sharing the things that i've done and she finally just stopped me and she said tamra she says i want you to picture god as your ceo and and you have been passing all this stuff forward paying it forward all that stuff and she goes and now you're going to go to him and you're going to ask him for a raise <laughs> And I was like, I like that idea. <laughs> you know, it. I'm going to, and, and, and then she goes and make a plan. Say how you're going to spend it. Here's how I will spend this raise that you gave me. And, and I actually went home after that and I wrote out a plan and I started planning. And, and that's what faith is. It, it, it's right. not just believing it, but it's starting to act as if, right? That's exactly right. We have entered into God's kingdom by faith. We have to at some point believe that God has actually heard us and has accepted us. And it's as easy as I'm now born again. Mm -hmm. I'm now saved. Maybe you don't feel it. Maybe you don't even think it. nothing around you has changed, but inside you have become a new creature. And so often we take these experiences of feelings and emotion. And we think those things are spirit. They are not spirit, which is why in the first chapter, I break down what we are. We are soul, we are body, and we are spirit. And we must understand what our spirit is. It is the pure essence of who we are. It is the DNA of God inside of us. Royalty does not go out and get. They summon so when we speak, we call things to us. That is the life of abundance. That is not sweat and toil. And that is just like you and me and our dad. <laughs> That's how he created us. So coming out of the world's way is going to feel weird. Mm. And I can get into things that happen exactly as I've read in the Bible that Jesus did you run the risk of being called certain things. I don't care. No one knows where they're going anyway. Uh, my children, when my children were attacked, um, our finances, God, we saw 
very tough times financially. We literally seen zero, zero in the account with nothing coming, no food. Uh, house uh, is about to be in foreclosure. Uh, cars are about to be re repossessed. That's a whole nother story about debt right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but God will put you in a position where he wants you to trust him. Now, this is not something we volunteer for and go say, hey, I'll, I want a little tragedy in my life. See if God's going to move. We don't do that. But he allows it. And if God allows it, we have to lean on what is it that you are trying to get out of me? We say all the time, God is good. We say that all the time. We say all the time, God is good and gracious. He's merciful. He's loving. But we never make it personal. God is good to me. God is merciful to me. He is gracious to me. And we might as well add, God has abundance for me. If things don't work when we try this, never say, okay, well, it didn't work. Ask God, what did I do wrong? Guide me. I know I missed it. It is never God missing it. It is always us missing it. <laughs> it is always mm -hmm. us missing it. If we have time, let me give you how specific this is. My wife and I are, are in a house. Uh, this is like 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. And uh, the long end of that, our house literally illegally got taken away from us. But prior to that, I was just so pressed with, man, what are we going to do? And God spoke to me and about this laying hand thing. I actually remember uh, hearing someone talk about it. And so that kind of made me dig more into it. So I got with my wife and I said, honey, how much do we have in the bank? She said uh, about $4,000. I said, well, how much exactly? She looked, she said $4,000. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, how much do we have in bills? And she calculated it up. And I said, I want us to give and pray over it and speak over something specifically, pay these bills, including a little leftover. So we wrote out, we, first we prayed, we said, Lord, how much do you want us to give? We're praying together. He told my wife, give 10% of your savings. He told, my, he told me, give $400. Now, we didn't know this, so we compared mm -hmm. notes. How much did God say give? He said 10%. I said, really? Because <laughs> he told me to give $400. Mm -hmm. Now, we said, okay, Lord, where do we give it? We obviously tithe to our church, but giving is on top of that. Immediately, a phone call came from California some friends that we knew because we used to live in California and her, uh, my friend's son was doing a missions trip and they were teaching him about faith, about how God would provide. And so he's asking for donations to go on this mission trip in Mexico. And I said, well, how much have you accumulated? So I say, how far are you away from your goal? He said, well, the entire goal is like, you know, $550 for each person. I say, how far are you away? He said, I'm $400 away. Mm -hmm. I think you see the light coming on. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, he said, if you can, you know, just give us 20, 30 bucks. I said, you have not because you asked not. How about this? I give you the whole 400. He was so quiet. I said, are you still there? He's yeah, I just, I just can't believe. It. So what did that do for his faith? Right. Mm -hmm. But on our end, we knew it was for what we wanted to do. So mm -hmm. when we gave that $400, we laid hands over it. This is exactly what we said. We said, Lord, we believe that we have received enough to double our savings, pay off our debt, and still have some left over. Now, remember the number, $4,000 of what we had in our savings. Mm -hmm. Now we just gave up $400. My wife was in real estate at the time, just kind of off and on. And there was this dentist that she's been talking to for over a year. He's been saying, maybe I'm going to move my practice. Maybe I'm going to buy a house. I don't know. 
So much so to the point where she's just stop asking. Right? <laughs> 8 30 that night, she gets a voicemail. Hi, this is Dr. So and so. Hey, I wanted to talk to you. Uh, please give me a call. 8 30. She's like, wow, why is he calling me? Haven't talked to him in who got, knows how long, right? Mm -hmm. She says, I'll call him in the morning. 8 30 that morning, he's calling again. Hey, Wanda, call me. <laughs> So finally, she calls him. Long story short, he says, I want to buy a house and I want to buy a house now. He's never been that emphatic. Mm. And so she's like, he wants to buy a house. I said, well, honey, sell it to him. <laughs> and she said, well, I don't know what I don't know what I said. And then all of a sudden it dawned on her when she was coming back from visiting her mother, she was driving through this master plan neighborhood that she thought was so beautiful. And it dawned on her, that's what I'm going to show him. She didn't have to do any work. She presented him what he was looking for to the salesperson. The salesperson did all the work, all the closing, all the paperwork, and gave her a commission. Wow. A commission and a bonus. How much was that commission? The commission was $16,000. The bonus was $2,000. So what do we have? That's $18,000. Mm -hmm. So we tithe $18,000. We paid off our debt, which was $8,000. How much do we have left? Another $8,000. Double what we had in our savings. Because wow. that is exactly what we spoke over it. So if anyone tries this, be careful what you say. <laughs> God will hold you to it. <laughs> don't be like a friend of mine that said, I want transportation. And without even realizing it, a neighbor left a bike at his doorstep <laughs> and said, hey, you could keep it. I don't want it. He said, why are you giving me this? And I asked him a week later, I said, hey, man, anything on your train? No, I'm still, you know, I'm still looking for a car. And then he told me that story. And I said, wait, 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 wait. Your neighbor left a what? He said, this is a bike. And it dawned. I said, dude, you prayed for transportation. There's your transportation right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Ask and you bike. shall receive. <laughs> exactly. I don't want a bike. I said, well, you need to be specific. A little while later, he got his first brand new car. I helped him do that whole process, which is how I got in sales, by the way. That That is incredible. But but I love how one of the principles that you talk about there is be specific. Yes. Be specific with what you, what you ask God for. And I think that's something that so often we forget about. You're not going to know if God actually delivered if you're not specific, oh, God, just bless me with this or bless me with that. And you're very general. Well, you're not going to know when it manifested itself. Mm. You're probably going to write off that acorn that I talked about mm -hmm. as God didn't answer, right? And mm -hmm. throw it away. Well, mm -hmm. you just threw away the very thing that God gave you for your forest. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very sensitive to God's spirit. And God uses sometimes tough times to draw us close to him. Like you and I were talking about that, you know, that, that little kid in that unfamiliar environment, you, what do they do? They grab their parents hand. Mm -hmm. He allows us to draw close because more than anything, God wants our company. He wants our presence and in his presence is everything you could ever ask for. Mm. There will come a time in your life, if it hasn't already, where you will fall in love with God all over again. And this is when you finally get to that place where nothing else matters. When I'm in your presence, I have no need for anything. And he's going to test that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you lose your house. You may have a health issue. Someone one may walk away. Uh, you know, it, it could be a multitude of things. But that's how he strengthens your faith, too. Mm -hmm. And that's when a loving father says to a child, ask me anything. Just like uh, the king told Ruth, right? Mm -hmm. Ask me anything. <laughs> and I'll give mm -hmm. it to you. 
Mm. And that's the God we serve. Mm. That is powerful. Wow. What incredible lessons on faith and God blessing us and that law of reciprocity. I love that. That is, and, and that's something we can each apply today. Do you know Absolutely. what I mean? Yes. Very we practical. Can, we can talk to God over our finances and say, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to give however much he impresses you to give, but cast it out with an expectation that it's going to return twofold, fourfold, whatever it is you ask for. And then with the intent that you will continue, right? That law. Any, oh, this has been amazing. So Daniel, tell me, have there been any favorite Bible verses that have become meaningful to you in this up and down journey? When we talk about suffering, uh, Romans 5, uh, 3 through 5, I think it is, comes to mind where we glory in our sufferings, mm. right? Because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not put us to shame. Mm -hmm. When we put our trust in God, it will not put us to shame. And that's why I have no problem being very loud, very proud about the God that we serve, because the word of God is truth. So many people will give their lives to facts <laughs> and facts are unstable, but truth can stand the test of time. And God's word is truth. If death is the worst thing that can happen to us and Jesus overcame that through Lazarus, as well as his own, what do we have to fear? Mm. Why would we fear unemployment? Why would we fear nothing in our bank account? You know, what is there to fear? We still worry. We still fear. We run from problems rather than face them because the problem could be the very thing that God is trying to grow us in so that we now are faithful enough to have the very thing that we desire. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> he's either moving something for us or he's moving you to it, or he's developing you, or he's developing the something for us. Either way, God is bringing things to you better than you can ask or think. Mm. When the children of Israel cried out, they were enslaved by the Egyptians 400 years. They finally cried out at, 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 at 400 years. I know it was a long time, right? <laughs> they finally cried out. The Bible strategically places when they cried out, God was talking to Moses. Mm -hmm. He was not talking to them. When they cried out, he was talking to their solution. It kind of reminds me like, when I was little, I don't know about you, but when we were little and my parents were on the phone, you don't talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and They true. will tell you, don't you see I'm on the phone, right? When we're begging and crying out to God and he's not talking to us, don't you see he's on the phone? <laughs> mm -hmm. He's talking to your solution. He's talking to that person that he's going to bring into your lap, that very thing that you desire. So be patient, be in faith, be in praise and worship. That's mm -hmm. all that's left to do because you know it's guaranteed to come, just like the law of reciprocity. Mm -hmm. And I love, I love that you say he's talking to the person that's your solution. Sometimes maybe that would be the thing that we need to pray for if we feel God isn't answering us. <laughs> Dear God, Bless me to find the person who is the solution to my problem. You know, I've heard someone say it this way. You know what, God, give me better than what I think is the solution. Ooh, that's, that's an even <laughs> And when I heard prayer. that, I, you know what, I'm going to take that for my own right there. Ooh, say it again. Rather than asking for the solution, Lord, give me better than what I'm asking for as the solution. Mm. Mm, that speaks to me. And that's his character. It's an amazing thing when we finally let go and just trust him. That's why we have a lifetime to finally get to that place of trust. Mm -hmm. And in that place of trust is our wealthy place. That's where all abundance flows. 
Oh, wow, Daniel, this has been so incredible. Would you mind sharing with us where we can find your book? Anywhere books are sold, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Apple, uh, I don't even know what other outlets are out there, <laughs> but it, it's everywhere. Type in Daniel Tesno or The Way of the Prophet or go to my website, danieltesno.com. Awesome. And will you spell Tesno for us really quick? T as in Tom, E, Z as in zebra, E, N, O. You know, I have to do that a lot, right? I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> and I will for sure also link that in the show notes so that you can Thank find you. both his book and his website much more easily. Daniel, this has been such an honor to have you on the show today. I just feel so blessed to be able to rub shoulders with you and have you share this amazing principle of abundance that I think I'm just barely tapping into it. So it's nice to have an expert come on and share both your journey from lack to abundance, but also the pivotal experience that you learned that God can be in you and that you just need to trust him. Hey, thanks so much for listening to today's show. If you like what you heard, subscribe so you can get your weekly dose of powerful stories of hope. I know there are many of you out there who are going through a hard time, and I hope you found useful things that you can apply to your own life in today's podcast. If you would like to access the show notes of today's show, please visit my website, storiesofhopepodcast.com. There you will find a summary of today's show, the transcript, and one of my favorite takeaways. You know, if someone kept coming to mind during today's episode, perhaps that means that you should share this episode with them. Maybe there was a story shared or a quote or a scripture verse that they really, really need to hear. So go ahead and share this podcast. May God bless you, especially if you are struggling with hope to carry on and with the strength to keep going when things get tough. Remember to walk with Christ and he will help you bear the burden. And above all else, remember God loves you.